What is going on guys? It's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about why is it so difficult for you to burn fat from your belly area? Why is it so stubborn? And even though you do everything in your power, the dieting, the calorie restriction, but the belly area just doesn't seem to go away. I'm going to break down the science as to why it is so difficult to burn fat from your belly area. Let's go ahead and break that down in this video. Stay tuned. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Why is it so difficult for you to burn fat from your belly area? Now, this can be different for other people as people have genetic differences, but generally speaking, for most men, the belly area and the love handles tend to hold on to more fat, and for women, it tends to be more the butt and the hips, but they can also suffer from stubborn belly fat as well. But why is that? See, the thing that makes people think that body fat burning is black and white because they have this warped sense of what body fat burning actually is. In one of my previous videos, I explained fat storage by talking about the fat cell, which contains fat inside of it. It contains triglyceride, which is glycerol and free fatty acids connected together and inside of your fat cells. Your fat cells hold that fat inside of them. It isn't like there's just a ball of fat and then when you work out, it burns and then you either sweat it out or poop it out or anything like that. It's much more nuanced than that, which is why no matter matter how hard you try, the belly fat area tends to be very, very difficult to come off and sometimes you never even see it come off. Now you can think of it as two layers of defense that protects your body fat from being burned. The first layer of defense is that you have body fat stored in multiple different regions in your body. There is visceral fat, which is stored around the organs, which actually help protect the organs. But of course, an excess amount of visceral fat can be detrimental to your organs. So you want to have a good amount. There's also intramuscular muscular fat, which is near the muscles binded to the muscle fibers or within the muscle tissue and both visceral and intramuscular fat can burn quickly. Why? Because they're right next to the source that needs the energy to burn. For example, organs require energy. Energy is stored as fat because the visceral fat is right next to the organs. It could provide the energy very quickly. So your body's going to tap into those fats first to provide energy to your organs. Same thing with your muscles. When your muscles require energy, it can tap into the intramuscular muscular fat. So your body's going to tap into those fats first before it taps into the third fat storage location, which is subcutaneous fat. Now subcutaneous fat is the fat that's right under your skin. That's the fat that you visibly see every day and that you absolutely hate. So that's the first layer. The first layer is that subcutaneous fat is utilized less than intramuscular fat and visceral fat. Those things tend to get burned much easier than subcutaneous fat. And then once we enter the subcutaneous fat realm, it splits into two. You see the fat cells that I was talking about named the adipocytes, which hold the fat inside of them, i.e. the triglycerides, also has a receptor attached to it. It's either going to be an alpha receptor or a beta receptor, alpha one and two or beta one, two and three. These receptors communicate intracellularly with other parts of your body that then and signal to release the triglycerides, break them up, and then move the fatty acids in the blood. So if you're under stress or you're working out, you release these hormones called catecholamines. And the catecholamines that release is norepinephrine and epinephrine, or noradrenaline or adrenaline. These are the hormones that connect to your adrenergic receptors, which is the alpha receptor or the beta receptor. Now, the beta receptors is very willing to break down the triglycerides, release the free fatty acids, and have it transported in the blood to a place that needs energy. But the alpha receptors is the complete opposite. They're very reluctant to do that. Even when there is that connection with the norepinephrine and the epinephrine, they will be incredibly stubborn and they will not break down the triglycerides and release the free fatty acids. It's almost like somebody trying to go on a date with someone and they keep knocking on the door, they keep calling, but that person is just not picking up the phone. Alpha receptors are the ones who are hard to get. Beta receptors answer the call every single time. Now in your face, arms and chest, you tend to have much more beta receptors than you do alpha receptors. And because of this, when you are losing weight, you tend to lose weight quicker in your face, neck, chest, arm area than you do in your stomach, thighs, and hip area. Because unlike your chest, arms, and face, your stomach, thighs, and hips tend to have much more alpha receptors than they do 
beta receptors. And because they have so many alpha receptors than they do beta receptors, in the ratio it can be almost nine times the amount. Visually, it'll be harder for you to see the belly fat go down. And the sad part about it is that you can lose all the weight from your chest, your arms, and your face, but because you don't see that belly fat leaving, no matter how hard you try, what ends up happening is you may relapse on your entire diet, and guess what the first place tends to be to store body fat? Your stomach, adding more insult to injury while seeing your belly fat increase in size more quickly when you come off of your diet. That has to hurt. It's almost like your body is simply laughing at you. Why are you even trying when you know it's going to be so hard for you to lose belly fat? And that's the reason why it's so hard for you to lose belly fat, hip fat, butt fat, over all other parts of your body. Now, what can you do to remove stubborn belly fat? Now, you can't spot reduce. By this, I mean you can't sit down, do some crunches, and because you're doing crunches, you're burning belly fat. It doesn't work like that. Those two things aren't connecting with each other. One major thing that keeps you from losing the belly fat is simply adherence. You never get to that point because you give up, you lose interest, you lose motivation because of how difficult it is to even burn it to begin with. You have to understand that although the alpha receptors are stubborn, it doesn't mean that they will never release those free fatty acids. Because when push comes to shove and you've released so much fat in so many different locations on your body, your body at one point will have no choice but to release the triglycerides, the fat that is stored in those fat cells that have the alpha receptors attached to them. What else can you do other than just adhere to the diet to try to get your body to work at burning stubborn? stubborn body fat. One thing you can do is improve blood flow. Exercising definitely helps improve blood flow. See, when the fat is pulled out of the fat cell, it's broken up, the glycerol is detached, the free fatty acids then get connected to a protein called albumin that travels through the bloodstream. The bloodstream acts as the body's internal transporter. It transports sugar and it could also transport free fatty acids so to bring it to muscle or organs that need that energy. Now if you have a poor blood flow it may be delaying the process so when body fat is removed and transported by the time it gets there the muscle or the organ may no longer need that energy source. So what happens is they take those free fatty acids, it gets returned, it gets connected connected with the glycerol becomes a triglyceride again and then returns into a fat cell. So although you were doing fat oxidation, you never got that free fatty acid to get to the point where it actually burned. And that hurts. So resistance training and cardio is pretty essential to helping you burn that last bit of stubborn fat. Adherence is the most paramount thing. As your body runs out of other sources of body fat, they will eventually start tapping in to the belly fat, as well as making your blood flow efficient, improving your blood flow will also lend itself to moving that fatty acid and moving it to the point where it burns and also having those hormones, the norepinephrine and the epinephrine that communicate with those receptors, alpha and beta, to pull the triglycerides, break them up, and then send the free fatty acids into the bloodstream. So I hope this wasn't confusing for you, but I wanted to explain how it actually works. It isn't just burn, not burn, burn, not burn. There's so much more nuance with body fat. And these are the reasons why belly fat in and of itself, and even hip and thigh and butt fat, tends to be very difficult to actually burn. So if you take anything from this video, please don't give up so early because you're not seeing the results. The fact that you lose the body fat so quickly around the face, around the arms, and around the chest, it can warp your mind to think that you'll lose belly fat just as quickly. So hopefully this video gave you some peace of mind to know that if you are losing weight in your face, arms, and chest, then you're still moving in the right direction. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon, and I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.